How's it going, boys? Johnny Superb Man here, and it's time for another NHL 19 shootout commentary. And this time, we are using the Peter shirelli list Edmonton Oilers, boys. He's finally Gonzo Alonzo. My God. All right, hang on a second. Let's see if I can do it from the left side. Woohoo! Oh, my God. The flying poke check by Frederick Anderson. I've been working on this move, boys. We're going to call it the Old McDonald Had a Farm. There was this guy. I finally remembered his username. It was McDonald. He taught me the shot. So there you go, buddy. You got your name in there. We'll talk about the Edmonton Oilers right after this. Hang on a second. Oh, my God. And Koskinen. The new $4 million man gets absolutely dipsied by Zach Hyman right there. All right, we got ourselves a good little shootout, boys. I got to see this again. Oh, my God, absolute filth. All right, come on, come on. All right, a lefty, let's try to not get too close to him so we don't screw it up. Go in, go out, go oh, whoop it up. Oh, man, I had it. The goaltender was ready for it. Next time, I will do the flip. But, boys, that's two for two. I told you, practice makes perfect. All right, Mitch Marner coming in. Oh, what's he got? What's he got? He's doing... Yeah, he keeps on going for it. I have to watch that far side. But he might just be sneaking it in left side. Okay, so if it gives, uh, it gives me a left-handed shot, I'm going to go for it this time. The RB right after, all right? Give me a left... Oh, here it is. Leon Draisaitl. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, pop! <laughs> he didn't move, though. All right. I'm scared because he, uh, he did a flying poke check early. Oh, that is so filthy. If only I can... <laughs> Just iron out the kinks in this. I'll be ripping it. All right, here we go. John Tavares coming in nice and slow. Nice and slow. Flying poke check. A Rudy, baby. I can do it too. John Tavares on his quest for 60 goals this season. Now, if the Leafs keep on slumping like this, it's not going to happen. All right, let's uh, another left. Ryan Spooner dropped. Uh, let's just get a goal here. I think he's going to do a flying poke check. Hang on. Stop. Yeah, there it is. Bye. <laughs> Ryan Spooner. Oh, uh, will we ever hear from him again? Freaking Shirelli, man. Goofy, freaking. I mean, oh, I'm going to get to the drop situation. I'm going to get dropped away. I have so much to talk about. Let's just focus right now. My, my, my mind can't be in two places at once. Kadri coming in, looking all slow. No, I ain't going for a flying poke check, my man. I'm going to stop you right there. All right, so the superb man shot for the win. It, it's not a possibility, but I'm still just going to try it out here, all right? <laughs> I can tie it up. Uh, oh, no, it's already tied. Okay, sweet. Okay, so it's a right. Jesse pulled your Harvey. Here we go. In, out. Beautiful. Oh, oh! <laughs> Just give me the right connection and give me a better camera angle game. What the hell is this nonsense? William Nylander. Will he finally wake up? Coming in. Oh! <laughs> That's a new one. Oh, I'm stealing that shootout move, my man. <laughs> if you're watching this video, you just sprinted right into the post. That was brilliant. Oh, I gotta watch that replay again. That was calculated. He knew exactly. Look, he's skating right at the post. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so it looks like the Edmonton Oilers lose again. <laughs> it's a realistic shootout commentary after all, boys. But I want to talk about the Edmonton Oilers. My God, the laughing stock of the NHL. <sighs> all right. So let's get into this, right? So uh, Peter Shirelli, the former general manager of the Edmonton Oilers, has finally been fired. Their record right now is 23 wins, uh, 24 regulation losses, and three overtime losses for 49 points. Uh, they are, what, second last in their division, nowhere near a playoff spot, and they've just lost three in a row, uh, the last one being to the Detroit Red Wings. After the loss to the Detroit Red Wings, it was reported that Peter Shirelli has been fired. And, you know, it's about freaking time. This guy has absolutely destroyed the Edmonton Oilers. Now, I got a lot to talk about, but I want to start by saying, or I want to start by actually defending Peter Shirelli. Now, hear me out. I'm going to rip him later on in the video, but when he was with the Boston Bruins, he had a very specific formula for building a winning team, and it got him a Stanley Cup in 2011. Now, remember, they drafted Phil Kessel, and we can look back now on Phil Kessel's career. He's a bona fide 30, 35 goal man, point per game player. He's a two-time Stanley Cup champion. I mean, Boston would love to be able to pl uh, pluck uh, Kessel from Pittsburgh right now and put him on the team. They had him back in 2009 and they traded him to the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team in their division, for two first round picks, right? Now next year, Toronto was a horrible team, ended up getting the second overall pick, it turned out being Tyler Sagan. The year after that, the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup. So, 
They trade away Phil Kessel, who is a bona fide stud, and two years later, they win a Stanley Cup. The formula worked, right? It was Boston Bruin hockey. The year after that, they lost in the first round to the Washington Capitals. Year after that, 2013, they returned to the Stanley Cup final. Game six, up by one against Chicago, and two quick goals from Bickle and Boland uh, got the uh, got the cup to win, or got the uh, Chicago Blackhawks their second Stanley Cup since 2010. But the fact remained that Peter Shirelli's team got to the Stanley Cup finals two times in three years. And what did he do after that season? The same thing he did with Kessel. He traded away Tyler Sagan to the Dallas Stars. I guess uh, Tyler Sagan, just like Kessel, didn't fit into the Boston Bruin hockey. They got themselves Louis Erickson and Joe Morrow trying to you know, bolster the squad. I guess they already felt they had the center core with Bergeron and Krejci. Well, let's get a, a winger who can play Boston Bruin hockey and Louis Erickson. Let's get a, a young defenseman to help us out with our aging blue line, right? And it's not like they were a horrible team. They've always been competitive. They're still good now, and they still have pieces that Shirelli put in place. Now, he was hired by the Edmonton Oilers in 2015, and this is where the wheels fell off the bus. I feel like he tried to replicate what he did in Boston. Not only did he trade away Kessel, not only did he trade away Sagan, he traded away Taylor Hall, following the exact same pattern. Now, let's go down the list of trades that... Um Peter Shirelli made as soon as he got hired, all right? It was the 2015 NHL entry draft. They just drafted Connor McDavid, but they also had another first rounder. I think it was uh, 15th or 16th overall. They decided to trade that to the New York Islanders in exchange for Griffin Reinhardt, right? At the time, well, let's get a, uh, a guy who was drafted fourth overall to help out our blue line. We just got Connor McDavid. Well, Griffin Reinhardt has been a complete bust, and guess who that first round pick that they traded to the Islanders became? Matthew Barzell, all right? Horrible freaking trade right there. The next one, they traded Justin Schultz to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for a draft pick. Now, Justin Schultz, I mean, he's a two-time Stanley Cup champion now. I mean, they could use a right-handed puck-moving defenseman like Justin Schultz, but no, they gave him up for nothing. Then, Taylor Hall to the New Jersey Devils for Adam Larson. And at the time, I guess Taylor Hall, you know, he wasn't exactly clicking with the Edmonton Oilers, but no one was clicking on the Oilers. They were the Oilers. And look what happens when he gets traded to the New Jersey Devils. He becomes the MVP of the league. Adam Larson, at the time, I guess, was still kind of a young player. Uh, hadn't hit his, uh, his full potential, I guess. And Shirley's like, well, he can be that blue liner that we need. That big Boston-style stay-at-home defenseman that we're going to need for our, our lethal offense with Connor McDavid. It's a big spend to give up Taylor Hall, but he did it in Boston twice. So why not do it again, right? The next one, Nail Yakupov gave up for Zach Pacheco and a third. I mean, nothing back. The next one, Jordan Everly to the New York Islanders for Ryan Strom. Everly was a consistent 25-goal man for the Edmonton Oilers. Traded him for Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom has done nothing. So they end up trading him to the New York Rangers for Ryan Spooner. Ryan Spooner does nothing. They end up dropping Ryan Spooner to waivers. Essentially dropping Jordan Eberle. All right? So let me just go by this again. Since 2015, he traded away Barzell. He traded away Justin Schultz. He traded away Taylor Hall. He traded away Nail Yakupov. He traded away Jordan Eberle. And he, dro oh, he dropped Jordan Eberle. Yeah, the other two guys. Yeah, he essentially dropped Jordan Eberle. I mean, can you believe that? And the other players that he, tra he traded for, Zach Cassie and Patrick Maroon, this is what I mean about the style. He's trying to go after players like, like Nathan Horton and Lucic from his days in Boston. I mean, Zach Cassie and Patrick Maroon? And then the free agent signings, Andre Sekera, Milan Lucic, Chris Russell, just big time, horrible contracts. They're going to stifle your ability to bring in, you know, young players, younger free agents. I mean, it's just mistake after mistake. And what I have on the screen right now for you guys is the Edmonton Oiler roster from 2015 had Peter Shirelli not touched a damn thing. First line, Taylor Hall, McDavid, don't know the right winger. Second line, don't know the left winger, dry side with Yakupov. Third line, New Nugent Hopkins with Everly, don't know the left winger. Fourth line, Matthew Barzell with no wingers. Now, you can mix and match. Barzell could play in the first line with McDavid and Hall. Uh, Everly could be up with Drysaddle and Yakupov. The point is, they have seven players there that uh, could certainly score some offense. On the blue line, Darnell Nurse with Clefbaum, and they still have Justin Schultz. No Adam Larson, because Taylor Hall is still on the team. And on the blue line, they have Ben Scrivens, who's not playing anymore. But Laurent Brassat, who is 10-1 this season with a 2.01 goals against and a 9.43 save percentage with the Winnipeg Jets. That would have been their team. And on top of that, I didn't even add in Jesse Pooja Harvey because he was drafted after Shirelli made these uh, made these moves. So, you know, it's not guaranteed that Paul Jarvey would have been there. But they would have had somebody. I haven't included the 2016, 17, and 18 draft. This is the team they would have had without three years of drafting. 
without any free agent acquisitions. And look at the team that they have now. Do you think this roster would have beat the current roster of the Edmonton Oilers? I do. I absolutely do. Yakupov, I mean, he would have been the seventh best forward in this team. He would have been fine. A 20-goal, 50-assist man. It was just horrible coaching and destroying his confidence, as the Edmonton Oilers do to every single player who plays there. So it's a great job trading, or not trading, getting rid of Peter Shirelli. But how do you fix this this dumpster fire. Do you trade away McDavid? Just say, you know what? It's not going to happen. There's no help coming from uh, uh, um, underneath. There's no help uh, coming from the AHL. We have to have like three more years of drafting. And I mean, you could do that. Hold on to McDavid. Let him just <laughs> be stifled in the NHL for another three seasons. You still have five, five more years on his contract. But I don't know, man. Where do you go from here if you're the Edmonton Oilers? I will leave it to you guys. But uh, Shirelli, I'll defend him with his trades with the Boston Bruins. Two Stanley Cup uh, final appearances in three years, one championship. But ever since 2015, getting signed by the Oilers, every move has been absolutely horrible. Every single move. So boys, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, Johnny here, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of sh I should have gone with Jose for Nandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card, first inning.